the square is back. I'm gonna be completely honest here. I've been dreading making this video for a while because I feel like most of the stuff that I've been working on since the last video has been like behind the scenes back end stuff. And I have no idea how I'm gonna show that in this video because you don't really see it in the gameplay, but I'm gonna do my best. So here we go. Hold up, hold up, pause the video real quick. If you're new here, what exactly is Jacob Square? You might be asking. Awful question. Jacob Square is a project that I've been working on for the past year or so. After I was showing my friend a debug console that I was working on by making a cube spin around the screen and move, and he and all his brilliance dared me to try to make that mechanic into a game. And now here we are. If you somehow feel like I skipped a few pages of the story after that, one, how dare you accuse me? And two, you can check out the rest of the playlist right here in this spot on this YouTube channel thing. You can't see, but I'm just pointing random directions right now. I'm losing my mind, so I'm gonna move on. Check it out if you're interested. Okay, so after spending majority of the last time working on a saving and loading system, mostly to make my life easier while testing, Wow! I figured I'd relax a little bit and work on some smaller issues, starting with something that has annoyed me for a very long time, but I did absolutely nothing about it, as you do. The fact that for parts like the structural triangle, there were two separate parts depending on what direction you wanted the triangle to go, which is kind of stupid and dumb and dumb and stupid, so I decided to finally fix it. Introducing part variants. So now, instead of having two individual parts, there's just one part, and you could switch between which which variant you want to place. I, I, I really don't know why I thought building this would get my point across, but I'm proud of it. I also wasn't a huge fan of the current early game play style of placing the manual extractors and then just clicking and holding the extract button. I feel like it's not really conducive of an epic time. This happens every time, man. <laughs> So the idea that I came up with and implemented for now is that instead of a button, it's a slider. And while extracting, there'll be a target point that you have to keep within with this slider. And as long as you stay within range of that target point, you'll be extracting. On top of this, the longer you stay within this target point, you will then begin to build up a multiplier for your manual extraction, hopefully making the manual extraction a little more interactive. Honestly, though, this is a spot where I would love to hear from you guys. If you have any ideas, ideas for features that I could implement that would make manual extraction a lot more enjoyable, which will take place mostly in the early game. Feel free to go ahead and scream it at me in the comments below. Just don't scream too loud, you might scare me. Following this, I decided to do a little bit of UI work starting with implementing this nice typewriter effect to the tooltips, which I'm not completely happy with yet, but I feel like it does a good job making the UI seem a little bit less static. The next thing on the UI that I decided to tackle was this, which you may be looking at it and saying to yourself, hey, I, I think it looks fine, and I'd agree with you, but I don't got no room left at the bottom, so I can't add anything else, which is a little limiting. So after thinking about it for a bit, I feel like my best course of action was to take like this section, for example, and just rip it out into its own little window that you can then just press a single button to open so that all the information is still there. It's just organized better. I don't really know how to say it. You get it. And that's what I did. I spent a good amount of time working on a window system that could hold the logic and information that these panels held in order to clear up some space on the main HUD. Once the base window system was made, I basically just copied over the UI into these new windows. And they're actually pretty cool because you can open them, you can collapse them, you can move them around, reorder order them, and I, I think it actually ended up better than it was originally. It also leaves me plenty of room and ability to add new stuff to the HUD in the future, along with new game mechanics that I have planned. It was time. It was time for me to tackle s <clears throat> It was time for me to tackle something that had been plaguing me almost since I had started this project. And I had just been pretending that it wasn't real, because if you pretend it's not real, then it's not real. 
The current building system in the game kind of sucks, especially in one particular way. You see, right now when you build something, that part will parent itself to whatever part you attached it to. Now this is fine and works dandy and has no problems, until you go to remove that part later on. Because it only checks the part that it was originally attached to, it has no idea if any other parts that are attached to it would be able to support it if this part was gone. So unless you remove parts in the exact order that you placed them, the game just won't let you do it. While this is annoying when building smaller things, when you go big scale, like when we were stress testing, it becomes almost unusable very quickly. And a lot of the time it just devolves into this. So how do I plan to solve this issue that I have literally been putting off for months? Uh, well, pathfinding? My plan is to implement a pathfinding system to where every single part that you place has the ability to pathfind back to the root of the REV. This way it'll know whether its current position is structurally sound. And if its original parent gets removed, it can recalculate this path to give itself a new parent. But saying and doing are two very different things. It's a good thing I have some previous experience experience implementing pathfinding, kind of. All right, here's where I'm at so far. I went ahead and added some debug lines because it looks pretty. And so that you can see the path that's generated. So now every part on the REV has a path for how that part is attached to the root of the entire structure. And to see the benefit of this, if you look at this part, it's currently parented to the part above it. But if I delete that part that it's parented to, it will then recalculate its path to still be connected to the main uh -huh, what? Okay, same scenario, but this time you can see that when I remove the part's parent, it recalculates and chooses a different part as the parent to where it's still attached to the root of the REV. As you should, you little rat. Now I just need to see how it handles an entire section getting detached. Uh, it doesn't. There it goes. <laughs> All right, it's been about an hour, but now it should properly delete the whole section when it gets detached from the- Hold on, hold on, hold on. What happens if I do it over here? <sighs> now I'm really starting to wonder what I just got myself into. Please, 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 please. Oh my god, I could actually cry. This section, gone. That section, get out of here. You, yeah, I'm looking at you. Get out of my game. You see, the problem was, in all of my excitement for this working now, I failed to foresee one incredibly major flaw that was about to rear its ugly head and stare straight into the depths of my soul. I completely broke the thing I spent a huge chunk of the last video working on. So here's the problem I was running into. Every single part in the game has an origin point, and this origin point usually coincides with the side of the part that gets attached to the parent when you place it. And this was all fine and dandy with the previous system, but with the new system, if the part's original parent were removed and it recalculated a new parent, the origin point of the part would no longer be attached to the parent. This wouldn't immediately break anything, but the second you try to save and load the game, it would just explode. Basically, when the game was loading and trying to rebuild the REV, it would attempt to place all of the parts with that origin point facing its parent, even if it wasn't the original parent that it had. You could see how this could cause some serious problems, and I didn't think about it when I was changing this, and I should have, and now I'm paying for it. To fix this problem, I basically had to rewrite the entire placement logic and change the origin point of every every single part to instead be in the center and then based off of whichever snap point is attached to the parent, a specific rotation and offset is applied depending on the part. Oh, that's not right. Hmm. You can see now that with all these changes made, all of these new systems are actually working perfectly together until I break it the next time, which I'm sure won't be long. 
little secret, these changes also open the door for some new features that I just haven't added yet. But hopefully I was able to do this progress justice in this video. Because like I said, a lot of it's behind the scenes stuff that you would never actually see playing the game. So it's also kind of hard to show it off. This project's come a long way since I started it all the way back in the first video. And there's a lot more that I want to add to it to hopefully make it a really fun game to play. And honestly, I'm really looking forward to what's next. If you guys like this, check out some of the other videos that I've done. Keep an eye out for future videos and I'll see you next time. Bye!